Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Let's move on now to discuss some treatment options in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, particularly in transplant eligible versus mm -hmm. transplant ineligible patients. Yeah, so the, the distinction between eligible and ineligible is a little bit of an artificial one. And it's one that we have taken from our European colleagues, where they arbitrarily say that if you're older than age 65, a transplant is no longer an option for you. And if you're younger than 65, it is an option for you. And I think in the U.S. we take a very different view of that, and that is we let performance status of a patient dictate whether or not they are transplant eligible patients. So we don't use that absolute age cutoff. Now in the transplant ineligible group, what I would call the frail group, historically we have used melphalan-based approaches, MP, MPT, MPR, MPV. But at ASH last year there was data presented that suggested that just the doublet of lenalidomide and dexamethasone without melphalan was just as good as those melphalan-containing regimens. And I think in the U.S., we've already stopped using melphalan-based inductions, even for transplant ineligible patients. So either bortezomib dex or lenalidomide in dex, those are becoming standard approaches even for the older, frail patients, uh, as opposed to melphalan-containing regimens. In the younger patient population, or the fit patient population, we've gone mostly to triplet-based therapy. And those include either bortezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, or the RVD regimen, or using uh, carfilzomib instead of bortezomib, the CRD or KRD regimen, depending upon how you want to spell the letters. Um, those regimens, uh, are in addition to a regimen called bortezomib, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone, or VCD, also known as Cybor-D, are probably the three most commonly used induction regimens in younger fit patients with myeloma in 2014. And I think the state of the art for myeloma has moved towards three drugs as part of the initial induction for fit patients, probably closer to two drugs for unfit or frail patients. Let's talk a little bit about treatment options in, and standard of care in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, in particular transplant eligible versus transplant ineligible patients. Sure, so you know we do make the distinction of transplant eligible versus ineligible more so uh, for how long we treat with certain drugs. Um, and that's been traditionally the case, and mainly because of certain drugs which we would prefer not to use in the trans transplant eligible patients. And that's mainly alkylating agents like melflan, uh, which I don't think are used as much, Joe, in the US, but certainly in Europe, uh, there was a lot of push for using melflan based regimens. And the distinction of transplant eligible and ineligible is really uh, to try and prevent. Um, oncologists from using a drug like melflan in patients where you are worried about or where you're going to be collecting stem cells. So you do not want to use a stem cell toxic drug. That's the main reason for trying to divide uh, between el transplant eligible versus ineligible patients. As far as, um, you know, I'm of the view that uh, you do have to end up giving uh, the best possible treatment, whether your patient is eligible or ineligible for a transplant. A lot of times we've used age as a cutoff, not so much in the US, but certainly in Europe, 65 is kind of the number, and that's largely because of how uh, transplants are compensated. Out here, if you're physiologically well, and even if you're 70 years old and you're fit, you would be considered for a transplant. Having said that, you know, um, Obviously, as you get older, your comorbidities keep increasing, and therefore you have to be a little bit careful about the combinations of drugs we use. What's happened in the last few years is most of us end up using a cocktail of some of these new drugs which are available. Um, in the transplant-eligible patient, the goals of care really are is to try and get your patient 
into a remission as quickly as possible, uh, get rid of all of the morbidity associated with the diagnosis of myeloma, and get them into a state where they're going to be able to tolerate that transplant, which we view as a consolidative approach. So most of us would use combinations. Uh, a lot of us in my practice, I tend to use a combination of lenalidomide with bortezomib and dexamethasone. Having said that, there's a lot of patients where we would consider using bortezomib with, say, cytoxan uh, in combination with dexamethasone. Um, in the clinical trial setting, we are using other proteasome inhibitors such as carfilzomib in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. So typically for the transplant eligible patient, we'd use a three drug combination. It could be any one of these with the goal of trying to get them into the best possible response uh, ever. In the transplant ineligible patients, <coughs> excuse me, um, I think the focus has to still be on trying to get your patients to do the best possible response, but you do have to consider what the comorbidities are, and you do have to combine drugs which a patient can tolerate. So you want to make sure that quality of life is not going to be impacted. At my site, we're still using a combination of lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone. The dosing of those, uh, that combination is very, very different from what we would do in a transplant eligible patient. So that we're using weekly uh, bortezomib, we're using lenalidomide at a much lower dose. We start off with 15, do it for 21 days. And this regimen is an extremely well tolerated regimen, and patients are actually doing quite well. Um, you know, if you look at the European uh, data, up until recently, I think the focus was on using a melflan prednisone based approach for the transplant ineligible patients, and to that add on a new drug. So there's old data from the VISTA trial, the MPT trials, which all have shown that as long as your patient is getting a novel compound, they're actually going to do much better. And there's been a lot of comparisons with the melflan prednisone containing uh, arms. So we've used melflan prednisone with thalidomide, melflan prednisone with lenalidomide, and melflan prednisone with bortezomib. I do think that's going to shift a little bit based on what was presented at ASH last year. Uh, Thierry Faccone presented the first trial, and what the first trial did was use lenalidomide dexamethasone for in, uh, continuous treatment, that is indefinitely, versus Lendex for a stipulated time frame, which was 18 months, versus melflan, prednisone, and thalidomide. And the winner there was lenalidomide dexamethasone. So in the U.S., we are already using Lendex-based approaches. Sometimes we are also combining them with other drugs. In the, in the rest of the world, and mainly Europe, which was focusing a lot on melflan prednisone-based regimens, I do think after the first trial, the shift is going to be more towards a Lendex-based approach. And the idea in the older patient, because you're not necessarily going to be consolidating a patient with a transplant, would be, we almost call this now continuous treatment. And overwhelmingly, if you look at the data, if you look at Dr. Palumbo's data with melflan prednisone and lenalidomide, the real benefit was in continuing treatment. So if they stayed on lenalidomide beyond the eight cycles of melflan prednisone and lenalidomide, those are the patients who really did better. This was also illustrated in the first trial where if you continued lenalidomide dexamethasone indefinitely until progression, those are the patients who did well. So I think what we've learned, at least in the, certainly in the non-transplant um, patients, once you start them on treatment, as long as they're tolerating the treatment with certain dose adjustments, continue treatment for as long as possible or up until progression. Most often for newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patients, we are using a combination therapy. And uh, most frequently we use a bortezomib-based therapy. Um, we use bortezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, the so-called VRD regimen. And we also use bortezomib, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone, or the Cybor-D regimen. Those are the two most common, uh, what we call induction therapies for myeloma, for newly diagnosed myeloma. Many of our patients are uh, considered uh, candidates for transplant, for autologous stem cell transplant. So we do that as induction therapy and then move on to 
uh, mobilization chemo and stem cell collection uh, for transplant.